Open your Bibles to Colossians chapter 2 and Romans chapter 8. We're continuing to teach on the topic of renew. And this is part three in the message, the teaching series. The book is separate, of course. It all comes together, but separate messages. And today, I want you to uh, look with me at Colossians 2, verse 1. If you are then raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Number, verse 2, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Verse 3, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Amen. So the text here said, verse 1, Paul said there, if you're raised with Christ, that is, if you are raised in new birth, resurrection, if you're raised with him, he says, seek the things which are above. Say, I will seek the things that are higher. Then he says, verse 2, then set your mind. So he said, seek, then he said, set. And the reason is, in order to seek you're to seek things above. You must set your mind on things above. It means, for example, let's say if you are seeking to understand, let's say how to handle finances. You're seeking it. You can do a quick Google search and search on budgeting and finance. You can begin seeking. But then if you don't set your mind on budgeting, you'll never be a good budgeter. You follow me? I mean, to seek something is temporary. I'm looking, I'm seeking, for, I'm curious about it. But folks seek things all the time, but because their mind's not set on it, they never get there. Make sense? So he says, seek and then set. He says, because your life is hid with Christ in God. You are dead. Say, I'm dead. I'm not dead. I'm alive. Look at me. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about spiritually. We are dead to the old ways. So, so people, you know, one thing about a dead person, man, they don't worry about anything. They don't worry about nothing, man. Dead folks don't worry about nothing. They're free from all their problems. I mean, naturally speaking. But the attitude is when we're dead to those things spiritually and in our thinking, we can be separated from it because death means separation. So he's saying separate yourself from the lesser things, set your mind on the higher things. Amen, church? Amen. Now, the message today is entitled, The Awesome Power of Attitude, Mindset, and Behavior. Say, the awesome power of attitude, mindset, behavior. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on things of the flesh or what the flesh desires. But those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. You ever wondered what's wrong with folk? What's wrong with yourself sometimes? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with folk? What's wrong with Jimmy and Sally and Mary Jo? What's wrong with my cousin and them? What's wrong with folk? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with folk is they got their minds set a certain way. They got their minds set on what the flesh desires. Now, you know, it's funny. I mean, this is, we, the examples abound. Don't need to go really far with that. You, we all know what this means. You know, we're going to do what we're thinking about doing. People going to do, you can sit there and try to explain to somebody and persuade somebody until you're blue in the face. If their mind is set on something, won't nothing you say make a difference? Unless the Holy Spirit takes that and opens their heart up with it. So we do preach, we do encourage for that reason. We do have the hope that something we say by the grace of God will cause a person's mindset to change. But you just talking at people, that's the worst thing. You know what I'm saying? Especially talking and not listening. That's really bad. You ever had somebody on the phone just start talking, 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 talking? I'll tell you what I do. I lay the phone down. 
Just lay it down. If it's somebody just rattling on, some salesperson, somebody I don't hardly even know, don't care about what they're talking about, I lay the phone down. Pick it up, it's still going, lay it back down. Oh, that's rude, Pastor. It's rude for you to be talking to me, not listening. Amen, somebody? Or I could say, would you please shut up? That'd be rude. The point is, if a person's mind is set on just doing something, like talking and never listening, you follow me? So, so what happens is, there's a power of attitude and mindset that drives everybody more than, more than most other things you can think about. But he also says that those who live according to the Spirit have set their minds on what the Spirit desires. That's what we're after right there, to have our minds set on what the Lord wants from us. And that's a very strong category of topics. I mean, God wants me to, to love people and listen to folk who want uh, to get help. He wants me to, to give money to people who are needy. I mean, sometimes people ask me for money. I said, no, I'm not giving you any money. Sometimes I give them, I mean, what's the spirit say, right? Because some folks' attitude is like, man, you ain't nothing. Give me a dollar. <laughs> you know, I don't care nothing about you. Give me five dollars. You give them five dollars. So we have this problem where we're letting attitudes and, and mindsets, I mean, just get way out of control, and we're not checking ourselves. We're not checking one another. And so as a result, there's just a lot of weirdness going on, y'all, that we could help if we would challenge ourselves and lovingly challenge people around us, amen, that, that we know. Let me show you a picture. There's an airplane called the SR-71 Blackbird. And this airplane, many say, is the best airplane ever made. And it was conceived in the 1950s, built in the 60s, okay? It was a secret for a long time. It's the fastest plane ever built. T to this day, it's the fastest plane ever built, all right? But sitting on, that, on the ground has all this power See all that, all of, it's just, it's just waiting. I mean, it just said, it's, it's saying, would you fly me? Would you get me off this ground? <laughs> the mindset of the designers of this airplane was, we're going to make a plane that's so fast, nobody can catch it, nobody can shoot it down. And this plane was never designed for fighting or bombing. It's reconnaissance, it has cameras on it. It was designed to fly over Russia, over Cuba, take these high-res pictures, I mean, way back in the day, and find out what the enemy's doing. Now, when satellites came along, they, satellites became so, so good, they actually replaced this plane's usefulness. Sat, um, satellite cameras now are, are high-res enough where this plane is no longer needed, so it's retired in the 70s. Here's the point, though. That plane was designed with a mindset of speed and it flies at a very high altitude to achieve that speed. This plane couldn't fly at, at the high speed Mach, well, Mach 3. It couldn't fly that fast in a low atmosphere because it's too much resistance. See, when you fly low, when the attitude is bad and the mindset's messed up, you have to fly low. Go to the third, third picture. The low-flying people... Go to the next one. Y'all crop dusters. You know, we got just enough power to stay above the ground to dump out some pesticides, spraying out a bunch of stuff. You know, just, just to kill the weeds. And so when our attitude is, is, is bad, we have to fly low. You know, 200 miles an hour, 250. Now go back to the SR, the other SR picture. Look at that. That just makes me excited looking at it. <laughs> That's what I want to be. I'm going to fly high. I'm going to fly fast. I want to be powerful in the Lord, full power all the time. And 
because it's flying so high, the air is so thin that there's less resistance. The plane can fly faster at the edge of space. That's what happens when you get your, when our attitude and mindset gets right. We can go high, fly high and go fast and do greater things for the Lord and for other people. Matter of fact, when this plane was flying, I meant to bring all the facts up. This didn't get it done, but this I know. I mean, there were thousands of missiles fired at this airplane. I mean, radar, now it's already stealthy, but when they were detected, they would send a missile up. And if ever the pilot of the SR-71 Blackbird saw a missile coming up, what are we going to do? Go faster. <laughs> they, go, they outran everything. No plane was ever shot down, not even close to being shot down. Because they just go, it's going too fast. Come on, somebody. I mean, by the time you get aim on the things, like, it, where'd it go? It disappeared. It's supersonic times three, okay? So my point is, I want you to get a picture of the awesome power, the awesome power of a good attitude and mindset. Before I discuss the negative piece, Get a picture of what a good mindset and attitude does. You can outrun the devil, outrun crazy people. Just stay above them and beyond them. Amen, somebody? See, if you're into, like, arguing and fussing, you know, you're argumentative, you're a crop duster. You're down there low enough where people can mess with you. When folk mess with me, I just speed up. Gone. I'm still standing in front of you, but I've actually, I'm, I'm not even there. I mean, this, in a, this, this conversation is so stupid. This situation is so ridiculous. Out of courtesy, I'm still standing with you, but in my mind and heart, I love you, but that mess you're talking about is like way down below me. Not because I'm better, but because I'm in the purposes of God, and my attitude is such that I'm going to stay sweet and all that, but I'm most concerned about keeping my attitude right with God. See, listen to me. I understand we know common courtesy is important. We get all that. But I would caution you against doing all this stuff, you know, to keep people happy. And then you're not making God happy. You know, you're not pleasing God. I mean, some people, you got to just dance around them, you know? I mean, their they attitude is so bad, you got to, like, like, tip up on them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't know what they're going to be in, what spirit they're going to be in today, you know, or this hour, or this minute. Because some people's attitude is so bad, like a crop duster, you know, the crop duster is flying so low, you know, gentle winds and breezes affect how it flies. Now, I've flown small airplanes and big airplanes. And the smaller airplanes are very subject to the buffeting of wind. Hmm? And they, have, they fly lower than, you know, the, the bigger commercial jets. And so the, the low-flying airplanes, the low attitudes, is subject to more resistance. You got me? More interference. But the higher flying airplanes go over the weather, over a lot of the bad currents. But this airplane flies at 80,000 80, feet. Commercial airplanes fly about 35,000 feet, 37,000. This thing goes at 80,000, 100,000. This thing goes like way, way out. If it gets so high, the sky is black. The sky is black, y'all. They're, they're, they're looking, they're on the edge of the atmosphere. They see blue below them, black above them, and the curvature of the earth. And it can't nobody touch them. They got no missiles. It's got no guns. Doesn't need any. <laughs> it don't have no offensive weapons. It's just too doggone fast. See, when you, when you fly high with God, then you cannot have to be defensive all the time. A lot of folks are so defensive, man, defensive about stuff. And you don't even, you don't, I mean, maybe you have, maybe, you know, you don't look right to people. You all right? 
I'm all right. Are you all right? I'm all right. Why are you asking me that for? <laughs> Do I look like I'm not all right? <laughs> I mean, low flying, low flying folk. I mean, us too now, all of us. When you fly low, you're kind of a mess. Because every little thing affects you. Every little breeze and wind and perception gets you off course a bit. Amen? All right, I'm going. You got the picture of that. What is a mindset? What is an attitude? Let's define these words. A mindset is a belief that affects one's attitude. Okay? A habitual or characteristic mental attitude that, under, that determines how you will interpret or respond to situations. That's pretty good. Yeah. It's an attitude, a mental attitude that determines how you interpret or respond to situations. Now, what's the attitude? The attitude is a personal view of something. A personal view of something. It is a manner, disposition, feeling, position, etc., with regard to a personal thing, tendency, or orientation of the mind. So attitude comes first. Attitude is the first thing we have. An attitude is the first thing we have that we own. And our attitude is our view of something. I mean, it can be so simple as, uh, like, Elder Owens got a bad attitude about Fords. He think all Fords are like junk and garbage, you know. He doesn't like Fords. He got that hit it. Hey, Christ even worse than Ford, okay? He's a GM man. I respect that, even though he's kind of wrong about it. But his <laughs> attitude has become a mindset. You follow me? I mean, he, I don't know when he went off on Fords and Chrysler. I'm, I don't know when he went off on that, but it's been like a you know, long time ago. And the brother's so, he's so stuck, man. It's like, I mean, it can be, it can be a Ford Shelby. I'm talking, about a, I'm talking about a race car. That's still junk, you know. I'm messing with you. But the but point is, an attitude is a feeling. But the feeling becomes a mindset. You know, there are black folk that just don't, don't like white people. I mean, no white people. Even the one you work for, you don't like. You know what I'm saying? Because the attitude developed somewhere along the line and became a mindset. And now it's irrational. Irrational means it don't make no sense. But it's a mindset. And it's locked in, man. It's, it's right in there. Okay? Now, so the attitude is a small thing, but it leads to mindsets, which is a big thing. See, attitude is a small thing that leads to a big thing called a mindset. And mindsets is what drive our behavior. So it's attitude, mindset, behavior. And this explains a lot of what's happening with people. I mean, good and bad. Because a good attitude can bring forth a good mindset that brings forth good behavior. It can go either way. It's power. I'm saying it's powerful. It's awesome power, whether directed negatively or directed in a positive way. I could have shown you a, a picture of a, uh, a, B2, a B-2 bomber. And... Uh, it's awesomely powerful as well, but its power is in killing people and breaking things. Right? I mean, bombers don't take pictures, y'all. The SR took pictures for reconnaissance, but the bomber is out there to, to kill people and destroy things. But they're both awesomely powerful. So, our, so attitudes and mindsets are awesomely powerful. And that's why we must really pay attention. So the whole idea behind, I mean, our renew, the renew devotional book and all this whole program, we need to renew our mind. Because some of us have got into bad attitudes that have become bad mindsets that's now manifesting bad behavior. You follow me? Now, if an attitude is consistently negative, it would lead to, a, lead to an overall negative mindset. 
that affects every part of life. See, it's not that a person might have a bad attitude about, about just one person and the mindset by one person is bad. What happens over time, they get a bad mindset about all people one way or another to the point where if anybody does anything that, look, that crosses them, then that mindset is going to manifest and jump out on that person too. Sometimes you think that the person who is disrespecting you, they say, why are they dissing me? Just what you know is they diss a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? They in the dissing business. They got a dissing mindset. You follow me? They're, they don't have a, 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 an honorable mindset. They, they don't honor people. They barely respect people because they have developed an attitude that became a mindset that's permeated their behavior. But thank God this can change. Say it can change. Say it must change. But when your attitude is positive, even when dealing with negative people and circumstances, you can operate at the high attitude, altitude level rather. If your attitude is positive, even when you have negative people around you, negative circumstances, you can operate at the high altitude. That's very important, y'all. Okay, listen, if somebody tomorrow, while you at work, say I'm at work. Say I work at work. All right? But somebody run up on you with a bad attitude or a bad mindset and bad behavior just kind of just kind of gushing up out of them, you know what I'm saying, toward you in the moment. If you go lock up with them and get into that attitude thing and let them let let your bad side come out. <laughs> that shouldn't be there anyway then guess what? You're not working. You're, you have stopped working, and now you are engaged with somebody who's stri you're in strife. It's called strife. But if your attitude is good, when someone negative comes along, you just have a way of you handle it, you dispose of it, and you never stop working. But see, what happens is we can't fly high because Every little thing pulls us down. You get going real good. You know, you're, 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 you're at the altitude. You got the afterburners on. And you, you, you focus on your objective. But then you let something just kind of pull you aside. It's like texting and driving. Not the best example, but it works. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You, we have to learn, people of God, that attitude and mindsets are your responsibility, not other people's responsibility. Hmm? Other folk in their, in, their, in their selfishness or curiosity are going to, you know, prod at you. Nothing bad always with that. But we help each other out, those of us who, who are following the spirit of God, by helping each other stay focused when it's time to be focused. Amen, somebody? Amen. You got that? Simple enough. But the thing is, even though it was a simple matter in the bank, I've been engaged in more serious pursuits and labors and efforts where if I had allowed distraction, it could have been a real problem. Amen? All right. The only way to live to live, to consistently live in accordance with the Spirit is to allow the Word and Spirit of God to change your thinking, habits, and behavior. Now, our text said those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on things of the Spirit. So to achieve that, that, that level where your mind is set on things of the Spirit of God, you must live in accordance with the Spirit of God. Say, live in accordance with. In accordance means just, just be, in, be in, on one accord, be in harmony with. Align, align yourself with what the Word is saying, with what the God is saying, with what principles you know are correct and true. Because what helps other people in your life most is when you're living where God wants you to live. 
Hmm? I'm telling you. You know, <laughs> we've done youth ministry in the past, and we'll do it again in the future. We have youth ministry going on different ways, media camp and so forth. But when I'm among young people, I figured out they don't want me showing up in there trying to look like them. You know, now I could, I could go in there with holes in my jeans and, and uh, whatever, you know, but I mean, I could do all that. <laughs> but, I mean, if an adult does that and that's in accordance with what they normally do, I'm, it's fine. But I think, I know people I help want me to be me. And I'm not, I'm not super formal and all that, uh, you know, but I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not loosey-goosey either. You know what loosey-goosey mean? That's the old term, loosey-goosey. <laughs> I'm very focused. I mean, I'm, I got, you know, people know me to be, you know, focused and excellent and all that. So I'm going to show up and be, I'm going to do me. How about that? I'm going to do me. Because people want you to, quote, unquote, do you. Now, as Christians... Doing you means what the Bible says. Well, first of all, I'm reading. I read the Bible. I'm doing devotionals, right? I'm doing the things that God wants me to do. And the information I'm taking in, what Spirit of God is teaching me, what's coming into me is helping me to live in accordance with the principles of God. And that helps me to keep my mindset, to keep my mindset so that when I encounter problems and, and problem people or, or difficult situations, I'm able to process that in accordance with what God has taught me and not just fly off at the handle and give folks a piece of my mind. Amen, somebody? Let me say it a little more <laughs> directly. Now, I, you know, I do prison ministry. Not a whole lot, but we got folks who go into the jails and prisons, we do the boys' school, women's prison. And if you deal with inmates and offenders, you know this. You know this. Ain't a whole lot of difference between them and you. <laughs> uh, the main difference is they went off. <laughs> they just went off. And did something. Something real bad. And got caught for it. Hmm? Now, we come close to going off. But the Bible says that those who set their minds on things of the Spirit are those who live according to the things of the Spirit. Say it correctly. Those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires, what the Spirit of God desires or what God wants. we got to get in touch with what God wants. So I've got to get in touch with what God wants. Because, say it because, otherwise I'm just full of what I want. What is a behavior? A behavior is the way in which one acts or conducts oneself, especially toward others. So we have it. There it is. We have attitude, mindset, behavior. Attitude leads to mindset, which leads to behavior. So there's no behavior taking place that did not first begin with an attitude. I mean, good or bad behavior. The behavior of us going out and doing outreach whether it's in the jails, prisons, again, the, you know, the boys and girls, jails, as it were, mission field, those, those behaviors come from an attitude of I love that. I love people. I love people. I care about you. I care about what you're dealing with in your life. And Jesus has given me grace to love you. And then that attitude becomes a mindset. And the mindset really is the ministry. You know, we, what we're doing systematically, day by day, week by week, you know, what we do all the time, how we think about situations. Now, that, that is our mindset, our ministry, and, and our behavior comes out of that. Amen? 
Now, you know that, you know, I mean, we have, we have praise team up here. We got Sean and the team up here. And, and they're volunteers, you know, volunteers up here singing and praising God and leading us in worship. You don't do that unless your attitude and mindset a certain way. It's just too hard to do. You know, some things are too hard to do. I mean, people get excited all the time. It's like, ooh, 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 ooh. I want to preach. I want to go preach. I want to do some outreach. All right, let's go do some, let's, let's go do some outreach. Get out there. Like, You're not listening to me. <laughs> he told me to shut up. I don't like this no more. See? No, you need more than an attitude. You need a mindset. Because attitude ain't going to hold up. You get a little, little bright, flowery, cheerful feeling come on you. I love Jesus. I love you. I must share the love of Jesus. Well, go, go, share, go share the love of Jesus. What you going to do? But let's see what happens when somebody with a bad attitude who don't love Jesus, who got a mindset that the church is all crazy and the preachers are all corrupt and, and, and they got some knowledge behind it and they can run some facts and figures, even if made up, they, they just, and you, then you meet a person like that talking about, I love you. And they begin to hate on your church and your pastor, hate on the Jesus. What are you going to do with that? Well, obviously, attitude is right. Your mindset's good. Say, well, I pray for you. You have a good day. God bless you. You know what I mean? It's just like, there's just, see, people, want, people, people who are like that read you. People who are of a bad mindset and have further the disposition to, to try to get into people's minds or get on your nerves, <laughs> what they do is they say that they drop stuff on you and they read you. They want to read you. And what they really want to do is draw you out and make you mad. That's the ultimate objective. I mean, but, but the really big one, I mean, the gold, the gold medal goes <laughs> to the person that make the Christian so mad, he start cussing and carrying on. <laughs> when I was a sinner, that's what I did. I love to tweak, I love to tweak Christians because I didn't respect them. They just weak. Christians, to me, they were just weak folk. Church folk, just weak as water in my book. And I would tweak them all the time, and they would verify my theory. I'd make them mad. I'd make them do stuff. I got people smoking with me and drinking with me. I mean, come talking about church goers. I, I had my little disco dance, you know, disco party at midnight on New Year's Eve. And I got the first wave at 10 o'clock. And I got the second wave at 12, 15 with them Christians leaving watch night service and coming to my party. And I'm taking their money and I'm stamping their hands. With, you know, the, the hands were like a, a, a little uh, ink stamp. Blue light, you know, you can see in the blue light. Make sure they're legit. Walk around with the blue light. Show me your hand. You ain't paid. Get out of here. Now, I was that guy. Before Christ. So now I'm in Christ. I, I ain't going to be weak with it. You know what I'm saying? There's no way I'm going to be weak with this thing because now I understand the attitude and mindset is such we need to have where we're going to keep our minds on what the Spirit wants. Knowing that people will come along, even though the devil will send, to tweak you. In fact, this does us a service sometimes. We find out, you know what, Lord, let me get back in prayer. I'm not where I thought I was. Right? Let me finish up here. Let me show you a little video clip. Now, we need to have what I will call a growth mindset. Say a growth mindset. And this is not a, this is a well-known uh, term, and it's really from the world and from science, but I want you to watch this video. And think about the video, okay? You watch it. Do you know this guy? Need some hints? 
As a kid, he struggled with school. He dropped out of college after only six months, and for money, would return Coke bottles for five cent refunds. Okay, one more. He helped found a company called Apple. You see, Steve Jobs wasn't born rich or a genius, but he did have a growth mindset. Simply put, a growth mindset means that with effort, you can train your brain to get smarter. That's right. Scientists have learned that the human brain acts a lot like a muscle, and using your brain can actually cause it to grow and even get heavier. You see, when you learn new things, tiny connections in the brain multiply and get stronger. The more you challenge your mind to learn, the more brain cells you grow, leading to a stronger, smarter brain. As a result, things that once seemed hard actually become easier. People with a growth mindset know that it takes effort to train your brain. Start by exploring new information. Learning something new can be scary, and you might get frustrated. But it's only because you haven't yet made the connections your brain needs. It's up to you to take charge. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Just like exercising your body, repeating an action builds strength. Read, write, or say something important at least five to ten times to make it stick. Most importantly, don't give up. When something is hard, that's when you need more effort, not less, to build those connections in the brain. Say, here's one more. Do you know this person? Need a hint? The growth mindset, they can train their brain to become stronger and smarter. Now, in, in the things of God, it's God's grace that empowers us. It is God's word that empowers us. But when it comes down to it, we still need to recognize that faith without works is dead. So then, you know, the grace message that's being taught oftentimes sound like, well, you don't do nothing, just, just believe it. Well, you know, of course you believe it. But our belief is going to generate corresponding actions. The point is, a growth mindset is what we all need. I mean, growth in the Lord, growth in our skill sets, growth in whatever that we need in our lives want done because the Bible says we're laborers together with God. And that's why we don't just do everything for people. We want to empower people. Say empower. empower. We want to empower people to adopt the right attitudes and mindsets that bring forth behaviors that result in benefits and blessings in their lives. Amen, church? So I'm going to close with the beginning statement in Scripture from Colossians chapter 3. Again, it says in verse 2, set your minds on things that are above, not on things in the earth. So we, we see what's around us. We deal with what's around us. But our minds aren't set on stuff here because our strength and our power come from the things that are above. Our progress and our, and our faster momentum and speed and, you know, it's going to come from flying higher by seeking those things which are above. Amen, church? Let's all stand.